students welcome to the online NPTEL course contemporary architecture and design in the previous class we have um, started with the industrial revolution and what was the effect of industrial revolution in uh, the domain of architecture and design and uh, uh, earlier we have discussed that uh, because of the industrial revolution there was a uh, crisis uh, c scenario generated in um, especially in Europe and uh, there were uh, because there were the uh, old school of uh, visual style of architecture and design and then the new invention of technology and because of the new invention of technology a new style visual style emerged and uh, so there was a, a two different uh, absolutely opposite uh, school of thought and different kind of uh, visual style emerged in Europe and uh, the reaction uh, again uh, between these two where uh, we are discussing Earlier we have discussed the um, uh, against uh, the for the machine movement. So uh, the machine movement and mach machine aesthetics was the new one uh, because of the invention of new technology and new uh, machineries uh, um, which was the resultant of uh, the uh, industrial revolution. And then there was the old school of uh, architectural thought which was uh, the architects and designers who supported that was uh, for uh, against the machine movement. So earlier we have discussed uh, for the machine movement and this time we will uh, discuss against the machine movement. And uh, as we have uh, uh, discussed earlier that within against the machine movement there are two different uh, school of thought. One was um, Art and craft movement, another is Art Nouveau. There are slight difference between Art Nouveau and Art and craft movement, but both of these uh, school of thought and uh, the architects and designers uh, within the uh, school of thought, they uh, supported the earlier visual style and uh, the artisans and craftsmanship of hands-on work and they went against the machine aesthetics. Uh, so, uh, they were uh, absolutely the opposite um, in the uh, opposite pole of uh, for the machine movement. In for the machine movement, we have seen the, uh, the uh, designs of uh, new uh, railway stations, markets and uh, um, some, some other um, architectural uh, marvels where they, uh, they have used the new technology like Eiffel Tower and uh, as well as the Statue of Liberty. But, um, uh, f in uh, for the uh, against the machine movement, uh, for example, Art Nouveau and Art and Craft, they uh, used mostly hands-on uh, the handcrafted uh, elements, and the uh, they went back to the previous uh, styles of architecture, uh, for example, Baroque, Rococo, and classical uh, architecture, as well as the traditional craftsmanship. Those were the inspiration of uh, visual style of uh, against the machine movement. So uh, uh, let's just brief about uh, the uh, previous uh, things. Uh, in 19th century industrial revolution, there was a uh, dilemma uh, in uh, t terms of one is old traditional style and craftsmanship together. Old traditional style also includes the classical bar uh, Baroque uh, architecture and um, uh, Gothic architecture and other uh, architecture style where the craftsmen and artisans were uh, not involved. Mostly the architects and designers were involved and the craftsmanship is uh, uh, from the crafts guild and the traditional um, artisans. So these two are one thing versus the new inventions or the material. So this was for the machine and this was uh, against the machine. So uh, old style cannot be incorporated in steel structure because of the new invention of the technology. So there was a new um, uh, um, visual style, prefabrication and mass production versus craftsmanship. Because of the invention of new material and new technology, there was a huge possibility of prefabrication which was actually replacing the craftsmanship because craftsmanship and hands-on uh, um, decoration takes more time but they has a particular aesthetic value in that. Prefabrication is very quick and uh, within a very short time many uh, designs can be many products can be fabricated so the uh, price comes down and uh, uh, handcrafted um, products, paintings and uh, designs has uh, takes more time and the price will be much more. So there was a uh, reaction between these two process of designing and process and techniques of designing. Then uh, because of these two reactions there was a crisis in architecture and design generated and two extreme radical style emerged. 
So, one is uh, here in the new technology for the machine and this is against the machine. In for the machine we have already discussed, in against the machine we have art and craft movement and art novo. They are uh, very closely linked and their visual style also overlaps and is, this is a little tricky to find out which one is art novo and which one is art and craft movement. But we will discuss uh, what are the salient features of both the uh, cases and we will discuss uh, how they are uh, varied from each other, but they both supported the traditional uh, craftsmanship and the old school of architectural and design style. So, here are some examples which we have discussed earlier in for the machine movement. Now, in against the machine movement, we will first discuss ab about art and craft movement. And art and craft movement first emerged in England and then they spread uh, these uh, architectural uh, and de design style spread in uh, rest of the Europe and then to America. But Art Novo emerged in rest of the all um, in all countries of Europe together and then they also uh, went to America. And all these uh, styles are main, uh, mainly evolved in Europe because uh, Europe uh, have seen the uh, industrial revolution first and this emerged from Europe. Renaissance was also in Europe and then um, industrial revolution was also in Europe. So, Europe has uh, Europe was a pioneer of these architectural styles which was pre-modern and even in the modern first phase uh, some of the architectural style first evolved in Europe and then they percolated to the rest of the world. But later when we look at the other uh, styles of uh, uh, later phases of modern modernism uh, for example internationalism and then in the next phases which are like metabolism and brutalism they were uh, in the rest of the world as well. So, internationalism uh, evolved in the all over the world and uh, uh, metabolism actually evolved in uh, far eastern countries like Japan, but earlier phases were start uh, starting from Europe. So, uh, art and craft movement, what are the features, salient features of art and craft movement? It is definitely a reaction against the machine and machine aesthetics. So, what we will look at the design styles were uh, mostly not, uh, cannot be uh, fabricated through uh, mass production of machine and re-establishing the craftsmanship over the mass production. So, they are supporting the crafts guild and their hands-on work over the mass production. Then uh, one of the pioneer uh, of uh, uh, this art and craft movement, the pioneering design, uh, designer and he, he was also a painter and architect. Uh, so, he, he was uh, William Morris and he told the fitness for purpose. What he means by uh, the term uh, uh, fitness for pur uh, purpose, when he connotes that, he says truth to the nature of material and method of production. These two are the main important thing what he is saying, the nature of material has to be uh, thought and then uh, the craftsman will uh, deal according to the nature uh, of the material and then the, uh, the uh, method of production will express their own expression and individuality to, uh, through the material. So, material and artisans will uh, come uh, will combine together and the product will be a unique piece of product which uh, cannot be mass produced through a uh, set factory. So, it stood for the artisans and the traditional craftsmanship. Here there is a little difference between art and craft movement and art novo. Art Novo uh, actually used the new technology and then uh, using the new technology they uh, combined the new technological tools and techniques through their use uh, and in, into their use and then they mixed their own creativity and expression through the new technology. But what happens in art and craft movement they absolutely discarded the new um, technology and mass production, the new techniques and tools and then they went for the artisans traditional technique of architecture and uh, uh, manufacturing and designing. So, individual expression by both artists and the workers um, uh, which, we, uh, which they valued the most and which is against the industry driven mass production. So, uh, it uh, started in Britain as uh, I, I was telling earlier and um, from the Britain it flourished to the rest of the Europe and uh, unlike uh, the Art Novo, Art Novo flourished in other Europe as well as in the Britain and then they went to, uh, to America. But in uh, art and craft movement it uh, started with Britain, then uh, it went to the uh, next uh, rest of the Europe and then it went uh, percolated uh, to America as well. 1920 is actually the start of modernism. So, this uh, time is in between modernism and 
uh, after uh, industrial revolution and uh, um, before uh, modernism. So, here uh, we will uh, see uh, that uh, art and craft movement actually suppressed by the other rest of the uh, movements of modernism. Why this uh, uh, even the art, uh, art novo also uh, um, uh, got suppressed by uh, other uh, modernist movements? Why this happened? Because uh, two extremely different uh, visual style cannot coexist together. So, there will be a reaction between these two. What in this uh, situation what happened was two extreme radical design style was there. One is for the machine, another is against the machine. So, these cannot coexist. So, in the la uh, later uh, cases what happened they took some of the influence from for, for the machine movement, some of the influence of the against the machine movement, a new school of uh, thought which was universal was there because uh, for the machine movement was uh, um, has some pros and cons it was easy to ma manufacture and it was uh, easy to spread their design and then against the machine mo uh, movement has some um, uh, pros and cons so it has more aesthetic values it has the individual it has the potentiality it gives the potentiality to uh, manifest your own expression into your product so they have taken uh, the uh, uh, plus points or some of the um, uh, things from both the things and then uh, the final the um, high modern style of uh, design evolved. So, uh, this was the scenario. So, that is why it stopped in 1920s when uh, they started the modern style. So, uh, uh, and for the experience uh, for the uh, inspiration design inspiration they started uh, 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 going back to uh, the Baroque Rococo style which was just before industrial revolution and baroque rococo style as we were discussing it was high in ornamentation and uh, there were a lot of intricate uh, patterns into uh, uh, into a baroque and rococo style so this was not minimalist at all and th uh, then the other things was they often also went to the classical style and which also uh, was different from the for the machine movement why we have uh, discussed earlier uh, for the machine movement has no uh, other added uh, very few uh, uh, other added elements there and it was more uh, mostly abstract the form of uh, crystal palace if you remember it generated just from the uh, way of construction even the Eiffel Tower it is just the construction technique and that is how uh, it evolved even the uh, railway um, uh, uh, railway uh, sheds all are just uh, uh, through the construction process. So, um, it, it was not um, uh, there in art and craft movement and uh, then also the medieval and renaissance things. So, uh, what was there they have some uh, these um, uh, for the machine movement they do not have uh, a figurative depiction they, they are all abstract in form. So, and uh, pre uh, industrial evolution they were figurative that we were discussing earlier why uh, this was a uh, figurative and in modern uh, very few movements were uh, uh, taking the inspiration of figurative. This uh, art and craft movement uh, uses lot of figurative depiction of visualization that we will see later. And also as definitely it will uh, take the folk style of visual expression that comes from the uh, traditional craft guilds uh, which uh, uh, were artis artisan driven. So, the design style if we look at uh, it is more biomorphic definitely and biomorphic uh, too it is um, figurative and uh, not geometric and uh, nature uh, biomorphic the term biomorphic um, uh, represents. So, when uh, the uh, lines and the curves um, are driven from a biological organism it can be flora it can be fauna, but the lines and uh, patterns can be it can be a leaf it can be a human uh, body or the uh, some, some other things, but uh, it the inspiration is from um, flora or fauna the nature uh, yeah it is nature inspired forms and shapes and lines and uh, from this natural sh uh, shape this there is a distortion with consistency. So, this distortion is a little abstraction from figurative uh, thing which we will discuss later and then they evolved a new style. So, this new style are definitely taking Baroque, Rococo, Classical, Medieval and Renaissance uh, styles uh, as their inspiration board, but they are not that style. Uh, so, they, they, they are abstracted, uh, they, they have slight difference from that and then they, uh, they emerged a new style for art and craft movement, which we will discuss when we will uh, see the uh, paintings and um, 
architecture. So, uh, in art and craft movement, when it started first is uh, through 19, um, uh, it started in 1980s, but it uh, reached its, uh, its peak in around 1987 and there was a um, exposition, uh, art and cra uh, craft exhibition society had organized a uh, symposium and uh, there all the artis uh, artisans, craftsmen and um, architects they met and then they uh, used the term art and craft. Uh, first and from that this art and craft movement had its name. So, um, uh, this is a reaction, uh, the main agenda of this um, exhibition was reaction against the declining design aesthetics of machine generated mass production. This they are calling the declining aesthetics of machine generated um, pro mass production because aesthetics is a very subjective term and earlier we um, uh, studied in for the machine movement that machine aesthetics um, was celebrated. So, either you like the machine aesthetics where machine will be uh, visible and this uh, um, grotesque uh, style of machineries, uh, you will enjoy that and that style will be uh, used to uh, decorate your facade or you like uh, the ornamentation and highly ornate man-made thing. So, for them the aesthetic which uh, machine generated aesthetic was not good. Uh, so, that was the within their agenda. And then it encompasses the social structure and economic livelihood of crafts guild around the art form. There it is slightly different from Art Nouveau. In Art Nouveau, uh, they used uh, new technology uh, and they blended uh, the earlier aesthetics together and then they generated something new uh, where they have taken help from the, the new technology. But here what the uh, uh, art and craft movement is focusing on the social structure and economic livelihood of the artisans. The artisans uh, used to uh, stay in the craft guild and their well being was uh, very uh, much focused in the art and craft movement. You can see the poster, so artisans meets, uh, meets architect, uh, that kind of uh, social model was there and which was also seen uh, from the poster as well. So, here uh, I, I was telling that uh, William Morris was one of the pioneering uh, architect, uh, uh, pioneering designer and painter uh, of uh, this um, art and craft movement. So, this is uh, his uh, weaving um, small factory which uh, this is not a mass production factory, this is the, uh, um, his uh, small weaving factory and textile factory where he used to design his uh, uh, textile fabrics by hand. This is one of his, um, it is not textile, this is wallpaper which uh, he have uh, designed and if you look at the pattern then it is all hand painted and um, uh, this will be uh, printed in um, as a wallpaper. Um, so, uh, this, this was one of his uh, work. So, uh, if we look at the architectural style, this was um, our architect, um, ar um, our building which um, was in um, England and designed by Edward Pryor. This is a uh, barn and most of this um, architectural uh, examples which uh, we get from art and craft movement looks like a barn. Why? Because uh, if we see the next uh, arch uh, architectural movements in modernism, the buildings will be um, earlier we, uh, we were discussing in uh, late modernism buildings were like boxes. And then Bauhaus uh, buildings and this um, other uh, Le Corbusier's building, it will be like all box and highly geometrical. And then the Francois house and uh, Johnson house, it will be like uh, absolutely box. But why these buildings in art and craft movement looks like a barn? Because uh, earlier, uh, when uh, we look at the mental image of uh, people about the house, it was not a box. It was uh, something like there will be a pitched roof something uh, like this and then uh, there will be some chimney and this was the mental image of earlier style of building. So, this style of building which has this peach roof and this some ornamentation, some chimneys, this are evolved from the traditional buildings which they, uh, was there before pre-industrial um, revolution. So, they have taken inspiration from what was existing and what was the, uh, the mental model of uh, people about a home. Uh, it was not destroyed. And the other uh, architect uh, modern architectural style, uh, uh, the meaning and the look and um, uh, feel and the visual style of home and residential building was changed. That was highly abstract, but this building was not abstract. This building looks like the earlier traditional um, 
uh, big bungalows or homes and they have taken some elements um, from there. But why this is a different if you look carefully the uh, style is a little different. So here uh, this is a particular style of art and craft movement some uh, ornamentations will be there and some other different kind of ornamentation if you look carefully this was new and this was a little abstract form which you will see repeating and this speech roof and um, other elements and then uh, the um, stone works on the facade was there and this cannot be a machine made um, just plaster and people have uh, artisans really have to do all these works on the facade and where they are um, incorporating artisan skill into the building facade. We will see another uh, well, this is William Morris's own house which is uh, designed by Philip Webb, he is an architect and a furniture designer who designed William Morris's house and uh, we will also see some interior of uh, William Morris uh, um, where William Morris collaborated uh, with Philip Webb uh, to uh, design some interior. So Here also we look at uh, the same pitch roof which came from the traditional built form and the chimneys which uh, these chimneys are actually not. Um, just um, a functional thing they add to the uh, visual and uh, they break the roof line and then they emerge from the roof line and that creates a visual uh, uh, break and uh, breaks the monotony and all these elements are added and uh, these elements were there in the traditional architectural buildings which were there in the medieval uh, classical and other style which was there existing. So they uh, incorporated that and they uh, retained that and even uh, if you look at the facade treatment some elements were added uh, some other uh, treatments were there and it uh, does not look like a very modern uh, abstract uh, uh, building at all and this kind of uh, conical roof is also a style of uh, art and craft movement which was also followed later. So, we will also see some of the buildings which was designed in uh, America in the same style. So, you can have a look at the same kind of conical um, shaped roof and the peach roof and jutting out um, visual break of uh, this chimneys and uh, some uh, other breaks in the uh, peach roof. So, this is the house in the Los Angeles America. Here also you can see the conical um, roof forms and the peach roof forms and some uh, stone work on the facade you can uh, see the similar pattern even the chimneys were there. So, this was the style of art and craft movement in uh, architecture. So, this is also in Chicago America. Now, if we look at uh, the uh, other uh, domains of uh, creative movements for example, textile design, um, uh, painting and others there also we will see some uh, inspiration was borrowed from Baroque Rococo and uh, uh, the traditional style. So, this is uh, the wallpaper. Uh, a textile printed by William Morris not Philip Webb. Uh, so, um, in this wallpaper you will see uh, the, uh, uh, the ornate movement and um, a curvilinear line. So, the, uh, the biomorphic lines what we were uh, discussing earlier uh, you can see it clearly that this lines emerge from the uh, flora and here this lines um, uh, emerge from the fauna this is this is a bird and other elements like flowers and uh, leaves are there. And if we look carefully this is a figurative depiction, but there is some kind of abstraction there. So, uh, if we um, look at a uh, renaissance painting of a leaf, renaissance painting of a leaf will not look like this, because this is not a uh, uh, depiction of a uh, pure uh, form of a leaf. So, if the leaf, uh, if we look at a leaf, leaf will definitely not this kind of black border and these lines. So, uh, this is slightly abstracted version of leaf and then artist uh, created his own expression through uh, um, his own uh, um, imagination. So, uh, uh, so, there is a blend of abstraction with figurative style. Here also the bird uh, does not um, has a very flat tone uh, there is no uh, shadow over there and even the uh, flower does not have a shadow and there is a black line going around it. So, this is a difference between um, this um, earlier style of absolutely figurative depiction to abstraction. So, there is an abstraction, but this, this is a stylized lines and patterns that is created from a biomorphic style. So, which we were discussing here that biomorphic style um, uh, inspir from biomorphic ins inspiration uh, distortion with uh, consistency and that creates the style. So, this is the uh, style created for art and craft movement from 
uh, with the exp uh, um, previous uh, influence of bar um, uh, Baroque Rococo and other um, uh, um, architecture, uh, other architecture and design style. Now we use the term tessellation. What the, uh, does the tessellation mean? So if you look carefully, this is the same design has been repeated, and there's a mirror image over there. So there is a repetition, and then here, if we look at the leaf, it is here. So and the same, if we divide this part. This is same as here. So, uh, this can be used as a wallpaper or uh, a textile print. So, this is hand uh, designed, but it can be printed in a uh, factory so that it will be a textile uh, de uh, design by hand, but it can be uh, printed on textile. So, they wanted to compete with uh, the mass production of. Um, other um, uh, uh, for the machine movement. So, they had to go for a uh, process of uh, repetition, but they imbibed uh, the style of uh, hand, um, uh, hand painting. So, in tessellation, what is the process of doing it? When you start designing, you have to design uh, the whole part and then you add this part to this thing. So, and you start matching this. Uh, so, for example, you have drawn this uh, leaf over here. I am simplifying it and then you have also drawn this leaf over here. Now you have to match and this part has to be repeated. So what you have to do is you copy this part of the leaf what you have um, drawn here uh, similarly here and then uh, suppose this leaf is this one and you start. So this part you have you have to cut and paste here. And then you start joining these design. So here you have to add other other leaves and then start joining. And then the same thing, the way you have joined, these, these extra added part has to be drafted over here. Then it will match. The same thing has to be done uh, on top of it. So for example, there is another leaf. So this part has to be added exactly here. And then you have to complete it. So you um, complete it. And then the other part, similarly, you have to add the same part has to be here and then you continue then the design will be continued and you, it will be a tessellation whole tessellation and uh, you can print this block by block so here are some other examples of tessellation so this is a mirror line you can see and then uh, some uh, yeah this is getting repeated here this is the line the same design will get repeated. So, this, these two are the printed textile again by William Morris, there is some uh, similar uh, thing is there and this is also a woven wool and in woven wool also uh, this tessellation is there. So, this kind of design can be um, created in uh, different fabric wallpaper so that uh, arti um, artist uh, gives a design and then the artisans uh, start uh, weaving it and uh, start printing it in the um, a similar design or uh, uh, changes the color in the next design and then uh, they create different uh, things. So, this is not exactly, um, uh, this is not um, hand pre um, 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 uh, mass manufactured, but similar patterns are repeated uh, there, so, uh, so that the artisans can collaborate with designers and uh, create uh, some design for consumer um, product um, uh, consumption. So, this is the wooden block for printing this. So, this is a printed textile, this is not a woven textile. So, this is uh, a wooden print block, so you feel the color in each and uh, every um, um, groove and uh, this these parts will uh, just have the color so uh, where there is a groove the color will not come and when the, there is a ridge the color will come so this might be the border black border of the uh, of some design so this is uh, again by uh, william morris um, um, company william morris had this william morris uh, uh, company uh, there uh, so it it's uh, from uh, his design uh, so here, um, there, there, uh, there is a possibility of uh, artisan's own imagination. Why? Because uh, the wooden block is there. Now you can change the color according to your own uh, expression. And uh, each and every block might be a uh, little uh, different. Uh, uh, each and every print might be little different based uh, on the selection of color. And there are some uh, some other um, uh, printing uh, thing will be there, which will make each and every print. Uh, different from others. There is a possibility to do that. 
Now, uh, there is other paintings uh, by William Morris, these are the paintings, this is not a printed um, thing and also William Morris have designed uh, furnitures. So, this is William Morris's furniture which uh, comes within the art and craft movement and you see the textile, this is the William Morris textile which, uh, which has the same tessellation and the biomorphic, um, fi uh, uh, biomorphic figurative plus a little abstract uh, uh, style. So, if we look at uh, the figurative um, style of um, uh, pre-industrial evolution and abstract, uh, art and craft will come somewhere here which is not exactly figurative, uh, but little towards abstraction, but not as abstract as Bauhaus and uh, high modern internationalist uh, style where they have Bauhaus have used triangle and pure geometric forms. So, it is little away from figurative, but um, still it is figurative and here you can see the uh, cabinets where there is a hand painted. So, this can be produced in um, wood shops and but uh, this part will be hand uh, painted by artisans. Again the similar uh, kind of chairs where uh, the tessellation is used and use of flora and, and fauna the, and the biomorphic um, design was there. Now, uh, this is a uh, interior designed by uh, William Morris and Philip Webb together. So, William Morris have designed this uh, wallpapers, this curtains as the same uh, William Morris style of uh, um, print, uh, printing and we, uh, uh, weaving and uh, uh, printed textile and this is a uh, partition wall painted uh, by William Morris. And then uh, Philip Webb have designed the furnitures which goes with the uh, William Morris style of art and craft movement and Philip Webb is also an art and craft uh, uh, movement um, furniture designer. We have seen the William Morris house, uh, uh, the barn where William Morris used to stay which is designed by uh, Philip um, uh, Webb as well. Now William Morris also have designed some uh, uh, logos and uh, trademarks. Uh, this is a trace, uh, trademark for uh, for a press and you can see the similar patterns were there, but in the trademark uh, there is a um, uh, constraint that you cannot use too many colors. So, if you use too many colors the trademark has to be printed um, uh, with several blocks, wooden blocks or lithographic blocks uh, with each and every color. For one color you ha should have one wooden block where there will be negative uh, uh, grooves and the ridges and for the other color again you should have another uh, block to print that color. So, uh, many colors will give you uh, has to be produced um, uh, with many blocks. So, uh, he has to go for one single color and uh, one uh, so that uh, there will be a one trademark groove and they can stamp on it. Uh, so, that will be the trademark. They cannot uh, stamp uh, two, three um, colors together. So, if you look at the um, with that constraint as well uh, all these biomorphic forms were also retained and this uh, curvilinear patterns and um, things are there even in the uh, um, uh, this um, typography you can see the similar pattern. And uh, uh, art and craft movement uh, again one of the um, feature was they used uh, um, floral pattern a lot. So, uh, the boundaries will be uh, like a creeper. Uh, floral creeper pattern a lot. So, if you look at the previous uh, designs as well, so there are a lot of creepers. Creepers was the uh, a very important uh, elements of design which was uh, there throughout uh, the uh, design style. So, and another um, art and craft movement uh, ar artist was uh, Eric Gill. You must have heard about Gill Sands. Gill Sands is designed by Eric Gill in 1928, but Gill Sands is uh, not exactly an art and craft movement. This is the Gill Sands because uh, he was famous because uh, he uh, designed this Gill Sands, but Gill Sands also has this little curves, but this is a sans serif form. S a sans serif form does not have this serif fins which a serif fonts has, but um, uh, still these added elements were there. So, this is towards modern because this is uh, 1928 after uh, the uh, finishing of uh, art and craft movement, but still if you look at these are some of the example where art and craft movements were there. Here if you look at the typography, the floral biomorphic patterns were there. Even with the very minimal uh, style this creeper, uh, creepery uh, border was there. If you look at these elements, so this depicts uh, metaphorically some creepery elements around the border and even if you look at the uh, 
um ends this is not a serif end exactly yeah these are the se some serif ends are also there so uh, they ends like a creeper uh, which is also uh, something like um uh, art and craft movement so this is a font um, which goes with the art and craft movement and designed in the similar um era which is designed by eric gill and some of the uh, sculptures of eric, eric uh, gill and uh, his only completed uh, building which again you will look at the similar style was followed with peach roof and other things um, added on top of it so this also comes under art and craft movement so in the next class we will uh, uh, discuss about the art nouveau which was another parallel movement and uh, which uh, also went hand in hand with the uh, art and craft movement because that also opposed the machine aesthetics and we will see the differences and uh, see the similarities of art and craft movement and art nouveau and also we will look at how art nouveau and art and craft movement influence the later uh, movements of uh, modern uh, modern and as well as the postmodern architecture <laughs>